Hello there friends, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a natural looking grassy terrain using these modular terrain pieces that you can find linked in the description below if you want to buy them for yourself. But this technique is going to work with any form of tabletop gaming board. The aim is to make the grass look as natural as possible so you can fully immerse yourself when playing tabletop miniature games like Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, and so on. I personally prefer modular terrain because you can completely change the appearance of your gaming board each time you play by just swapping them around. And more importantly, you can pack it up and store it in a small space. The pieces even clip together to stop them moving as well. But the most important thing to consider when dealing with modular terrain is that each side of the piece of terrain actually matches the one next to it. No matter which way around you turn it or face it, it's going to fit anywhere on the board. So do bear that in mind when you go through this tutorial. But now, let's get started on this grassy hillscape and riverbed tutorial. I've already undercoated each board in Mechanicus Grey spray paint from Games Workshop. Alternatively, you can just paint each panel grey using a brush. The base coat is very important though because it will allow the paint we add from this point onwards to actually hold onto the matte texture and not try and hold onto the smooth unpainted plastic. Next we'll be using Zandri Dust which is just a deserty earthy tone of spray paint from Games Workshop. If you don't have it don't worry you can still carry on with the next step of the tutorial it doesn't really make too much difference. But as you can see, I'm using this spray paint to quickly go over the areas that are going to be mud and earth on the panels. I'll obviously be leaving the river this rocky gray undertone and the same for these exposed rocks. You may be wondering what the point is of doing this since we are covering the entire area in grass anyway but you will find that the grass doesn't actually completely cover every single millimetre of the board and some areas you're actually going to want to intentionally leave exposed just because in real life grass doesn't cover 100% of an area in nature. Next we're going to use some cheap acrylic paint. Make sure you don't use your good paint when you're doing this. You want something crappy and cheap. So here's just a standard black and white paint I'm using. This can be mixed together to create grey and then you can alter the amount of black and white to make it darker or lighter. Using this we are going to go around all the areas of exposed rock and riverbed and repaint any areas that we covered with the brown paint. Please don't bother taking your time with this bit, it's going to be messy and expressive because nature is not perfect and we, and we can blend out any mistakes we make later on in this process anyway. So really just have fun, express yourself, be messy for once, don't you know be anal with this process. I find if you are painting every single rock perfectly it actually starts to look unrealistic because it looks like it's been engineered by man. And we want it to look loose and expressive. Next we can get even more messy. I'm going to use a light brown, an almost skin colour brown and some brown ink which is a lot darker. Alternatively you can just get some brown paint and water it down. What you're going to do with this is mix them together and then literally glaze and wash the entire board in a thin coat of this brown sort of muddy Paint. We're just trying to build up different tones of mud here really, that's all we're doing. You're literally going to wash the board with the paint and you'll notice that when this paint is watered down it really easily blends together with everything else on the board. So you're going to use it to form natural transitions between dark and light brown. This is quite a quick process but really just play around with the paint, it's so wet that it takes quite a while to dry so you've got a lot of time to work with it here until it starts to look natural to you. It really is fine for areas to be blotchy and even uneven because this is really what the land looks like. We have so many different types of soil that this is really realistic. Just make sure that the edges of each modular terrain piece are the same shade of brown. Otherwise when you come to connect them later you end up with them looking uneven next to each other because the sides just don't match up unless they're a certain way round. 
You can also go back and use black ink and water it down to go over the riverbed and merge it with the rocks and mud together, just so it kind of blends as one seamless piece of land. Ideally though, you want the bottom of the riverbed to almost be black in colour and then the edges to get slowly sort of transition into a lighter grey. This is so that when we finally add the water to this riverbed, it will actually look deeper than it really is. Now we can just leave everything for a few hours to dry completely and then we can finally add the grass. I recommend using a mix of three different grasses. These can really be any choice you want. I'm using a light, dark and medium sort of colour straw green. But you may want to go for a lighter grass, a dead grass or even like, I don't know, a red or bright green grass. It really depends what you're trying to represent here on this board. You can literally do anything you want though. You can also get different lengths of grass as well. I'm actually using a mixture of 4mm and 6mm I do believe. It honestly doesn't really matter that much though. I guess your grass is going to look a little bit more natural if it has variation in its height. I will link some grasses in the description below for you to pick from though. Next we will need this strange device. It's called a static grass applicator. How does it work though? Well you basically just put all the grass in a mix in here and then you plug it into the power. And then the metal rod inside will give the grass a negative charge of static. Then when you shake the grass onto the surface of the board, you can hold this metal wire with a positive charge and it will cause the grass to stand on its end. This means that you'll end up with a grass standing upright and actually looking like grass instead of lying flat and just looking like, I don't know, a wet field of grass or something. I'll link where you can get one of these in the description below though. We will also need some PVA glue and some water to prepare the surface for the grass mix. Just mix the PVA with a little bit of water and then apply it over the terrain with a brush. Try and avoid the rocks and the riverbed uh, but to be honest don't worry too much if you accidentally get grass on them it's very easy to remove later with just a bit of water so just paste pva over the entire board that you're about to put grass on i recommend doing one or two at a time once covered you can get your static grass applicator and, and start shaking the grass onto the board like so make sure that you use the positive charged wire near the bottom to make the grass stand on its end like this. It sounds really complicated but honestly it's super easy but it is very messy to do so make sure you kind of have like a sheet lying down so you can pick up all these tiny little bits of grass or just do it outside or something. After you've applied the grass onto the board get your brush and load it with water and then start washing the stones and the riverbed gently to remove any grass that got into the wrong area where you didn't want it. You're going to want to repeat this process over the next modular terrain tiles. And another great tip to make this look super realistic is to think about where your army will be walking across the terrain and how people might move about this environment. For example, this wide shallow part of the river looks like a good place that people would use to cross it. So I'm actually going to water down my brush again and gently wipe away the grass before it dries. This exposes the earth so it actually looks like lots of animals or people cross the river at this point and they kind of like have killed the grass around it because it's just so saturated with water. You want your grass to look a little bit patchy because in real life the river floods, the grass doesn't grow everywhere at a continuous 100% rate just evenly. Just make sure that you try and leave the grass on the edges of the board though because like I said earlier they need to line up with the other board edges. You can see though on the rocky panel here I've actually decided to use less grass overall and let a muddy underlayer show through a little bit more. I imagine there were some animals grazing here or perhaps there was a campsite and some horses ate some of the grass so it's a little bit more bare. You can make up stories behind your terrain like this and it kind of brings it to life I think. I've also gone back over the riverbed and highlighted some of the rocks towards the edge with a slightly lighter grey. 
this is a pretty randomized process. I'm just leaving the middle center of the river rather dark and I'm highlighting the tops of the rocks towards the outer edges. So when we actually do come to add water, it's just going to make it look a lot more three dimensional and we still maintain the depth because the center of the river is almost black. Now we're just going to leave everything for 24 hours to dry fully and then you can start on the river or even add some snow effects if you're interested. If you want another tutorial on how to do that, you can follow the next part of the guide where I'll be showing you how to create a icy river or even just a normal river depending on what you're looking for here. Just click the link in the description below to my next tutorial and you can watch that. And of course, if you really like the video, you can subscribe and press the bell icon and then YouTube will let you know every time I have a new terrain or painting tutorial out on the channel. There's lots of videos over there all arranged in a playlist for you to watch anyway. If you haven't seen them before, go and check them out. But thanks for watching guys. Give the video a like if you found it helpful and I will see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.